Hi, we're on your toolkit, page 21. Um, we're looking at segment lengths in a circle. Um, and I'm actually gonna start with the bottom part of this um, toolkit page. And we're gonna start here with our two chords. And remember the product of uh, each chord, if they intersect in a circle, are equal to each other. So this line here, this chord, has segments on it A and B. So that means A multiplied to B is gonna equal, and our, my other chord here, just kind of use a different color to color code it, uh, we'll call one part C and one part D. C multiplied to D. And you can use parentheses if you want instead as well. So the product of two chords are equal. So that should have been, um, I believe, less than seven. Let me make sure I'm matching it up correctly. Yeah, less than seven. And then in lesson eight, uh, we were looking at the segment lengths of circles went, that went outside of a circle. So what we have here in this diagram is we have two secants. So remember the difference between a secant and a chord is that a secant will actually go outside of the circle as well. Um, so let me go ahead and label this secant just with one color. And we'll call this segment that's outside A and the segment that's inside B. So we know that the length of A, when I multiply it with the entire segment length, A plus B is going to equal C multiplied with the entire segment length, C plus D. Well, actually, I'll do that in this color as well. So we always take the outside piece or the outside section of that secant. We call that the external secant, and then we multiply it by the entire length of that line. And then our final um, situation here is a tangent and a secant. So with our tangent segment, that would be this right here. Remember, a tangent only intersects a circle at one place. I'm going to call this segment A. And A is going to be multiplied with the entire length of the segment, which is also A. So we can just say A squared. And then we'll set that equal to... Let's do, uh, let's use the letters B and C for this line here. And it's gonna be set up the same way that we had. So the outside piece multiplied by the entire segment length. So now let's use these formulas or the shortcuts of our formulas and we're actually gonna go ahead and solve for um, the variables in each diagram here. So we have the product of one chord, so 10 times X. So we can set that up as 10 X equals 14 times 15. I'm going to use parentheses here to show multiplication. So this would give us 10x equaling 210. And if we divide by 10 on both sides, we're going to get x equals 21. Okay, and my next diagram here, if it's helpful for you, um, we can pick one segment as our red segment here with the A and the B. And then our other segment here, I'll put in purple and we'll call that C and D. So we have our outside portion of the segment nine. We're gonna multiply that with nine plus X. And then let's set that equal to the outside portion eight multiplied with the entire thing, eight plus 19. And if you wanted to, you could have added those together in your first step as well, that works. Um, now here, we can't combine nine with X, so we just need to distribute. So nine times nine, that's 81. Nine times X, that's nine X. And then here we can kind of do this in one step if we want eight plus 19. Um, we could have written, wrote that as 27. So it's really just eight times 27. And this is gonna be 216. And so then from here, we can just subtract 81 on both sides. So 216 minus 81. I'll put my calculator over here so you can see what I'm putting on here. Uh, that would give us 9x equals 135. And then I just need to divide by 9 on both sides. So x is 15. Okay, and then our last segment here, um, we have 24. That would be our tangent segment. So that's like the a segment here. And then the 18 and x, we'll call this the b and the c, the outside and then the inside portion. So we're gonna have a squared, or we'll call that 24 squared, is equal to 18, the outside piece multiplied with 18 plus x. 
So on the left side, we can go ahead and square 24. So that's going to be 576. And then we can't add 18 with x, so all we can do from here is distribute. So 18 times 18, or we call that 18 squared, is 324. 18 times x is just 18x. Oops, I put two equal signs here. This is just a plus. Okay, now we're just solving for x. Oh, my picture's in the way here. Let me move that up a little bit. Uh, let's subtract 324 on both sides. So we have 576, and we're subtracting 324. That gives us 2552 is equal to 18x. And then we just need to divide by 18 on both sides. So x is going to be 14 in this diagram. So those came from lessons um, 7 and 8. And now in the last lesson, or the next lesson of this unit, um, we are looking at and focusing on tangents to a circle. Okay. Um, feel free to pause this if you need to. If I went a little too fast, if you still need to write some things down. Um, so in our first diagram here, um, what we have is a tangent segment. That's this segment here. Let's go ahead and label some of these pieces. So I'm going to call this point here A, this point here C, and this point here B. And then the center of the circle, let's call that D. Okay, so um, if AB... That's line AB. So it could be a line, it could be a segment, um, it could be a ray. If it is tangent, if AB is tangent to circle, I'll use a symbol for circle, we'll call that circle D. Then what we know is that the line AB will be perpendicular, and I'll use my upside down uh, T for my perpendicular symbol, It'll be perpendicular to CD, and I'll put CD as a segment. And then just a reminder, a tangent intersects a circle at one point. So this right here would be our point of tangency, okay? So if this line here is tangent, um, we have our point of tangency here. What that means is we're creating a right angle. Um, so when we were creating right angles and when you were working with um, you know, segments that are tangent, you're gonna be working with a lot of triangles as well. And we're gonna be working with right triangle properties. So keep that in mind. You might see some sine, cosine, tangent, or you might see some Pythagorean theorem, okay? And then next in my diagram here, um, Let's say both of these segments here are tangent. Let's go ahead and put a point here and let's give it a name. Let's call this point A. Let's call this point B. Let's call this C. And then let's just still call the center of the circle D. Um, let's go ahead and create or draw a radius. So we have a two radiuses there, radii. Um, so what we want to write is if AB and CB are tangent, um, what that's essentially creating is we're creating some congruent um, parts here. So what you're going to notice is since I said this was a radius from D to A and D to C, I'm going to put congruent marks on each of those. Um, we also know that if they're tangent, they create a right angle. So I'm going to put a little right angle symbol here. And then I'm just going to draw a line from D to B. And now what we actually can look at and what we can see is that we have two triangles here. And we know that they both have a congruent um, side. They have a right angle here. And then this side that they share, this is a common side. Remember, we call that reflexive. And I'm going to put two little congruency marks here. So essentially what I just created was two triangles that are congruent. So I can say triangle ABD is congruent to triangle, if I did ABD, I'd want to do CBD. Remember the triangle congruency reasons, side, 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 angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle. Well, the last one is our hypotenuse leg. So these are right triangles. And the reason these triangles are congruent is because of the hypotenuse leg. Theorem. So I just wanted to kind of go over and explain that with you. Um, really what we were looking to figure out was that these segments here, AB, and this segment here, um, CB, are congruent. So we can say, therefore, 
AB is congruent to CB. Remember that's congruent triangles have congruent parts, the CPCTC. Um, and so basically, any two segments that are tangent to a circle and they meet at the same point, they're going to be equal to each other.